Thank you and we praise you. We honor you and glorify your name. We thank you for allowing us to come into your house one more time. We thank you for the ability to minister your word and from the sacred desk. God, we ask that you continue to touch, continue to move by your spirit. I decrease, you increase, have your way. Move by your strong hand. Move by your spirit. Meet every need today. Save the unsaved. Heal those that are sick. Bring deliverance, oh God. You're the God of deliverance, and we bless you, and we honor and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. amen. We do honor God and his son, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost today. And we praise God and bless God for each and every one of you, the people of God, that God has so fit to get me in the land of the living. Yeah. Going to the book of John today. John the 16th chapter and the 33rd verse. John the 16th chapter and the 33rd verse. <clears throat> Book of John, St. John 30, 16th chapter and the 33rd verse. A read from the King James Version on today. We praise God for his goodness and his mercy. Nobody can do us like the Lord can. Somebody said he picked me up and turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. That solid foundation is Jesus. John, the 16th chapter, the 33rd verse. You have it. Read along with me. And Jesus says these words, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let's read it one more time. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And the fall today is be of good cheer. I'm going to use the words of Jesus. Be of good cheer. B means identifying you, identifying you, of, uh, belonging to, connected to you. Good, good is high quality. Anything good is high quality. Cheer is a happy attitude, demeanor, having the right attitude and right demeanor. Keeping the right attitude. In other words, being encouraged. So saints and friends, I speak to you today, it's important for us to remember the words that are spoken, spoken unto us and over us. I'm not talking about foolish talk that people talk to us and meaningless words that people say to us and words that people say to us and try to hurt us, but I'm talking about holy words, I'm talking about good words. I'm talking about words of substance, words of substance that mean something, words of wisdom, words of instruction. Words of uh, exhortation, words of reverence, words of rebuke, and words of encouragement. Words that come from the Holy Bible, because the word from the Holy Bible is the word of God. The words that are spoken to us by Jesus, Jesus the Son of God. He's God in the flesh that came to earth, who came and dwelt among us. Jesus was the word. He was the word which we read about. We read the word and we should do the word. And we should be members of the word. I'm talking about the word that has been taught to us. The word that has been preached to us. The word that we need every day. Wisdom comes from the word of God and we need that word every day. The spiritual water and the spiritual food that sustains us comes from the word of God. Just as long as we know when to live in this world, we need natural food. We can go only so long. We can go the longest without eating uh, and drinking, but we're going to need some physical food at some point in order to sustain life. The word that God has given to us from the foundations of the world are words that we need to hold on to us. Words that have been deposited into our mind and our soul and our spirit and they give us life. We understand through the word of God that God says his word will never pass away. So you want to get God's word because it's eternal, it's everlasting, it's the truth, it is the life. It has already and it is coming to pass. Because we know from the word of God that God cannot lie. And God's 
word is true. And the Bible lets us know that God's word accomplishes everywhere that God sends it, it accomplishes it and performs everything he sends it to do. Everywhere it goes. The Logos word of God, the written word of God, the rainbow word of God, the God word that God allows to be spoken into our mind and our heart. We ought to hold on to that word. And in order to have success in this life and live a victorious life that Jesus has already won, and we as a church, we as a body of repentant, born again believers, we as a people uh, who have confessed our sins, who have asked for forgiveness, who have humbled ourselves at the feet of Jesus and turned from our evil ways. That means we made a 180 degree turn. We're going away from evil. We're going the exact opposite of evil. We're going toward good. We're seeking the face of God. We are the people who are committed to sustaining and standing on the foundation and principles of God's word. We must be willing to obey God's word and say yes to the will of God and say yes to God. A people that have faith in the word of God. A people with their mind stayed upon God. Because you trust in him, the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Why? Because you trust in him. Because he keeps you in perfect peace when you read his word and study his word and apply his word to your life. When you meditate on his word, uh, God will bless you. When you begin to look at the Bible and read through the Bible, the first chapter of Joshua, when the Lord served Moses and died, God told them, Joshua, he gave them a charge. He said, be very strong and courageous. I Meaning, be very uh, courageous in faith, centered in the word of God. He said, don't turn to the right or to the left, uh, to the commandments that Moses has given to you. And don't turn from the law. But then God said, meditate. And the same thing he told Joshua we got to do today. We got to meditate in the word of God day and night. That your way may be prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Because great success comes from deeply meditating in the word of God. Rehearsing the word of God in your mind. And letting it get in your heart. And marinating it in your spirit. And then you go forth through the word of God. When you hide the word in your heart, you'll be like David. David says that I might not sin against you, God. When you get the word deep down in the inside, you know what the word says. And you can keep the word in your heart to do the will of God and be pleasing in God's sight because you know what the word says. The Bible says the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Uh, the word of God will lead us and guide us. It will correct us and put us on the correct path. And then the Bible lets us know in Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 16 and 25 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There twice it says that. We think we know which way to go. But we got to go in the direction God would lead us and guide us to go. Uh, Psalm 119 and 132 says, Look on thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. The Lord wants us to obey his word and command. When you look at the word of God in Psalm 119 133 to 137 and we're talking about being of good cheer, it says, order my steps Lord, in thy what? In thy word. So I gotta have the word in me. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man. Man will try to hold you down in all kind of ways. So will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face so shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. We should always want to receive and learn from God. He said, the rivers of waters run down my eyes because they keep not thy law. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. We are living in a time where things are moving fast. We're living in a microwave society. And when things have only been slowed down here in the last few months because of a world pandemic. But you know before this pandemic, it, everything was moving. People didn't have time for a lot of things. Things were just going and going, but this pandemic has slowed things down. And things are just beginning to open up. In this crisis, in this world pandemic, uh, we've had this virus. And also, to add on to it, we have seen racism.
racism and social injustice raised its ugly head, which was dormant, but it was always a slime sleeping giant, always there. And because you know what? It came and they made us come to demolish society. And these many distractions, these many obstacles that are coming, these many roadblocks and difficulties and circumstances, many things that come to catch us off guard and catch us and increase our appetite to entertain us, to pull us away from our true purpose and goal. But we can't lose focus. We can't lose our goal of pleasing God. There are many relationships and societies that have went into shipwreck when they lose the word of God. We understand that even in this time, there's trouble on every hand. There's bad news all around you. There's fake news. There's disgusting news. There's horror and terror. There's crime. And it's seeming like there's one thing after another. Every time you look around, there's something going on in our world today. Well, after all this is said and done, we don't want to lose our relationship and our fellowship with God. We don't, or we should not want to miss our blessings. Or we don't want to kill our dreams. And we don't want to lose out on our heavenly desires. And we don't want to fatally destroy the promises that God has for us. The Bible lets us know that if that in Deuteronomy 8 and 3, and Jesus repeats it in Matthew 4 and 4, he said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of who? Out of the mouth of God. Jesus knew the word and used the word as defense against the enemies, against temptations. Jesus, the Son of God, who speaks to us in the word today, spoke then and says, Be of good cheer. Jesus wasn't instigated by the devil. But he was very strategic in all his dealings and his ministry on earth. How was he strategic? Jesus was strategic by fasting and praying. He was strategic by seeking the will of God. And he was led by God to get the victory. If we don't get the victory, we got to be led by God like Jesus was. And we're going to accomplish the will of the Father. How did he do it? He was submitted to God. And we got to be submitted to God. We got to be obedient to God just as Jesus was. And when we become obedient and submit ourselves to God and live for him, we are adopted because of Jesus into the world family when we receive the sacrifice of Jesus as sons and daughters of God. And we the children of God through Jesus Christ must follow his lead. Jesus not only knew the word, but he obeyed the word and his father 100%. And we must be readers, hearers, and doers of the word. Colossians 3 and 9 says, Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Colossians the third chapter 15 through the 17th verse says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. We as the people of God, if we are going to receive the words that Jesus has spoke, he said, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. We must remember that obedience is better than sacrifice. If you love God, you will obey his word. You will keep his command. And if you're a true disciple of Jesus Christ, he said, how do they know you're my disciple? Jesus said, because you show love one for another. The world needs love, and we that have Jesus ought to be showing love one to another. And everybody ought to want to treat everybody right. But the devil will try to tell you to do something totally different. The devil will make you misquote the scripture. He'll make you to go this way and that way to the left or the right. He'll make you go astray. He'll try to get you to bow down to him. He will try to make you want to be more self-righteous. Uh, but it's not about what we think or how we feel. It's about what God's word says. And only God's word is true. And we got to understand that the enemy is on a mission. He's on a mission 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's trying to kill you. He's trying to steal from you and he's trying to destroy your life. But the devil is a lie, the father of all lies, the Bible tells me. 
Satan is the evil one. He tries to tempt you through the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. But you need to rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. You need to tell the devil to get out of your place. To get out of your home. Get out of your cars. Get out. Get out of the church. Get out of the country. Get out of this world. Get out. You need to say, lose here, Satan. Lose here. We got to cast the devil out of our mind and out of the will of God's people. We bind the devil in the name of Jesus. And we got to lose the people to God that we can see straight. We got to be loose from the depression and confusion of the enemy so that we can see clear. We got to remove the fog and smoke from our eyes that we can see Jesus and him alone. Glory to God. When we command your spiritual ears today to become receptive to what the Spirit is saying to the church. And be slow to speak and swift to hear. We command, oh God, for the Lord to remove every demonic force that's stopping you from hearing the voice of God today. Amen. And I command you in the name of Jesus for your ears to be open and your eyes and your spiritual eyesight to come back. Sin is in the world. Hatred is in the world. And if you if Jesus said they hated you, if they hated him, they're going to hate you. Uh, they already hated Jesus. So they shouldn't be a mystery to you. Persecution will come. And the Bible lets us know those that shall live godly shall suffer persecution. Afflictions will come. Offenses will come to us. But the Bible says, woe to them that bring the offenses. And what I love about David, David said, out of all of my affliction, the Lord delivered me out of them all. You got to know who's going to deliver you, who's going to bring you out. No matter what it's going through, no matter what you're going through, who's going to bring you out? No matter how they talk, no matter how we talk, no matter how we shout, no matter how we dance in this world, uh, the Holy Bible is going to be fulfilled. It's going to be fulfilled. Whatever God says is going to come to pass. I pray to the Lord, help me to stand until Jesus comes. Don't let me backslide. Don't let me lose my soul. Don't let me be lost right now. Don't let the devil take me to hell with him. I want to live for Christ. Amen. Don't let me blaspheme against the word of God. Uh, I want to hold on with all that I have. Yes. Because I want to make it with Jesus. So saints of God, we got to be encouraged. And that's what Jesus was letting us disciples know before he went back to glory. We got to be encouraged. And sometimes we got to encourage yourself. In the word of God. Many times it's quoted that David encouraged himself in the word of God in the Bible. And we got to encourage ourselves because we can encourage ourselves by knowing what the word says and what God says about us. But we got to be of good cheer. Jesus told them to what? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully misuse you. There's no other strategy than the strategy that Jesus already gave us and God gave us in the word of God and we're going to make it. We got to pray for a strategy. We got to pray that God will lead and guide us by his spirit. Show us what to do and how to do, which way to go and what to say. And we got to be led by the spirit of God. Not the flesh. Not your own mind. Not the selfish and vindictive, selfish and hateful thoughts you got in your mind. But you got to be led by the Spirit of God. You got to have the mind of Christ working on the inside. So let us have the mind of Christ. We got to give over to the will of God. We must use the authority that God has given us through the finished work of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we got to cast the devil out and cast out every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That's why in 2 Corinthians 10, Chapter 4 through the 5th verse says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. There's always going to be something trying to hold you, trying to pull you down when you're trying to do what's right, when you're trying to go with Jesus. But you got to cast down imaginations. You got every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Be of good cheer because we are a blessed people. We're already blessed. And we ought to rejoice and be exceedingly glad because great is your reward in heaven, the Bible lets us know. There's nothing greater than God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than him. You serve the God of the Holy Bible. He's the greatest. He is 
everything that we need. He's Alpha and Omega. He's everything. We serve a God that can do the impossible. He can do the miraculous. There isn't anything too hard for him. We serve a big God that's bigger than everything that can even happen in your life. For you and God are a majority. And if you're born again, if you say the Bible says you ought to be the son of the earth, we are the ones that season the earth. We flavor the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are the preservatives of the gospel in the world. We have the word in us that will melt the cold and the stony hearts of them out there to bring healing to the wounded souls. We are the lights of the world that shine in darkness. And you got to know any kind of light will shine in darkness. Any kind of light is dark. If you bring a candle in the room, it's a big light. Any kind of light. So you got to let your light shine that God has put on the inside and you let it shine in darkness. Not hide it and let it shine that men will see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. The Bible lets us know we're more than conquerors because we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. You are overcomer. You got to overcome by the overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. And victory is to the overcomer. First John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You got to know that. You got to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a peacemaker. Wherever you go, the peace of the Lord should arrive with you. Uh, you got to let not your heart be troubled, but you got to believe in God. When you believe in God, when you know what you're doing, when you stand on Him, you're not frustrated, you're not confused, but you believe in Him. And the Bible said, believe also in me, Jesus said, that in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would not have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. So Jesus says in John 16, 33, he's telling them to be of good cheer. Jesus, after completing his earthly assignment of teaching, living, bleeding, being beaten, persecuted, tormented, ridiculed, lied on, talked about, deceived, stabbed in the back, pierced in the side, thorns in his head, betrayed to his face, dying for the sins of the world, and being raised by the Father on Resurrection Sunday, was leaving the word to encourage us. Nobody can teach you better than experience when you've been through anything. Jesus knows all our infirmities. He knows all our weaknesses. He's been tried. He's been tested. Uh, he was tested, tried, and all of them. He knows what we're going through. There's no feeling that you have that Jesus doesn't know about. So he wants to comfort us. So before even going back to God with his father, he comforts us with the word. He said even though he was getting ready to return to glory, he said, I'm coming back again. I want to let you see in your mind. I'm coming back again to judge the world with the saints. I'm coming back again. Jesus said, I'm Emmanuel. I'm God with you. I, I dwelt with you. I dwelt with mankind. He's God that came and, and wrapped himself in human flesh. He was 100% spiritual, 100% divine, 100% man at the same time. He redeemed mankind back to himself. Jesus, who was out there to make the beginning and the end, his presence. Uh, would be with the church. Uh, faith. All you would have to do is have faith to believe. He was asking before he went back. He said, God, I'm going back. He said, I kept him when I was here, but I need you to keep him now. He said, I'm asking God to send another comforter for you. To be with you. And Jesus would be us with us, the Bible said, to the uttermost end of the world. He's always with us. And God said, I'm never going to leave you, nor forsake you. So next we should have victory and peace in Jesus alone. Jesus was saying, in the world you're going to have torment. You're going to have some tribulation. You're going to have some persecution. I've been through all of that. You're going to have some trials. Don't expect anything different. These things are going to be there. But put your trust in me, Jesus said. Uh, put your joy in me. I know that sometimes the world... Uh, the joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you. The world can tell you, put your joy in me. Jesus said, put your joy in me because I've already overcome the world. So be happy. Have good cheer in me only. And say, have peace in Jesus because I'm the Prince of Peace. And my peace surpasses all understanding. Peace over your will and peace over your mind. 
So Jesus said, be of good cheer. In other words, as he was getting ready to leave and leave with his disciples and left with us on record, he said, be of good comfort. In other words, be of a great heart. Be of a great mind that God will work it out. It's going to work out for you. It's going to work out for your good. In Romans 5, 3 through 6 says, and not only so, but with glory in tribulation also, Paul writes in the word of God, knowing that tribulation work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope and hope, make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength, oh my God, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. But be of good cheer because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. I'm the Son. He said, we can have good cheer because our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus said, you can have good cheer in that. He said, if you live right, if you stay right to the end of the world, you're going to obtain eternal life. Jesus said, you ought to love one another. As I have loved you, you ought to love everybody. Then he said, be of good cheer. He said, I'm not going to leave you comforters, but I'm going to give you another comforter. Sometimes you need to be rocked in the midnight hour. Sometimes you need that comforter. And we need the comforter of the world. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. He said, you're going to need the power of God to make it through and keep your cheer. And it comes in my name, he says. The comforter will lead you and guide you in all truth. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. What's in the life said unto you? The Holy Ghost is here, saints and people of God. And we got to be of good cheer. And all we got to do is ask for the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And Jesus said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. If you're going to make it through this season, you're going to need the Spirit of God. You're going to need Jesus in your life. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words, and you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. Uh, he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and your fruit shall remain. So in other words, we got to keep the right attitude. We got to keep the right spirit. We got to rejoice in the Lord and the spirit. And the word said, rejoice always. And again, I said, rejoice. We got to rejoice in the Lord and be righteous. And we got we to gotta keep on praising God. Because there's two times to praise him when you feel like it and when you don't. Jesus prayed for us and he's continuing to intercede for us. On behalf of us. He's interceding to the Father for us. Plead for mercy for us. So we got to be of good cheer. Be happy today because you're on the Lord's side. Put a smile on your face. Put a praise in your heart. And put a hallelujah on your lips. Get your attitude right. You know when you're a parent, you tell you to get your attitude right. Get your faith fit. Straighten yourself up. Jesus said, get yourself straightened up. Be a good chief. Put a smile on your face. Don't be down in the dump, but lift up the heads. Lift up, look to the heels from which cometh your help. Look up to the Lord. That we're going to higher heights and deeper depths. Serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah. Have a glad heart when you serve the Lord. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. You can't lose your joy now. But the Bible said leap for joy. Yeah. And even when you're in your home and you couldn't get to church, you can leap for joy. Yeah. You can leap somewhere in your home. You can leap for joy. You can lift your hands to the Lord and surrender to Him wherever you may be. And the Bible said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The Bible said, pray the Lord, everybody. And you ought to be able to lift your hands because God is the lifter of our hands. You ought to pray the Lord because there's power in the name of Jesus. And there's something about the name of Jesus. If you call him early in the morning, if you call Something begins to happen. Something chemical. Oh my God. In your spirit begins to move. When you learn how to call on the name of Jesus. I don't know if you ever had trouble in your life. But if you learn how to call on Jesus. Jesus I need you to hear me. Hear my prayer. Hear my call. Call on Jesus. Because he's the reason for every season. Jesus is the answer 
said every prayer that you call on Jesus, all our answers is in Jesus. So you can't give in and you can't give out, but you got to keep on holding on to the Lord's unchanging hand. Jesus called him and believed in his word that he is the son of the living God. And he will bring you through. So he said, be of good cheer, because I've already overcome this world. All the things that you're going through, all the trials in your life, just call on Jesus. He's a heavy love bearer. He will bring you through, because he's a bridge over troubled waters. He's everything that you need. So learn how to call. You ought to make that commitment today. 
You're stressed out, you're depressed, you're going through, you need to be on the Lord's side. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's a gift readily available to every believer. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need the comforter. You need the power of God. It's not just enough to, to repent and be saved, but we need the power of God in our life that we can make it through this life, that we can make it through our trial and tribulation, that we can make it, that we will have the power, not the backside, the power to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And that you say it, you can ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you repented of your sins, your prayer ought to be, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Clean up your house. Get rid of everything that's not like God. Get rid of everything in your house, not like God. Pray that God will feel you. There's many today that need healing in their body. Many are sick. And we're praying for you right now. That the God of all flesh, the God of the Holy Bible, will heal your body from the inside out, from the outside in, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. All things are possible to them that believe. Have faith that God will heal your body. We pray the prayer of faith today. Hold on and believe God. Believe God. We believe in God with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise God for you. Then they trouble in your mind and pray for the suicide mind and oppressed and depressed mind today. That God will touch your mind. That God will bring deliverance to your household. Bring deliverance to you. And bring deliverance to every situation, every circumstance, everything that's holding you by, holding you bound. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we thank God for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen.